Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update. Today, the 28th of January 2016, lots happening all over the northern half of the country, even the southern half of the country as well, seeing some crazy stuff with a massive upper level low. You can see a lot of showers and thunderstorms developed this afternoon across the eastern half of Queensland, with a lot of uh, severe potential there over the next couple of days. Look, I just don't have time tonight to talk about that, uh, because we really do need to focus in on the tropical low off WA's coast. But bear in mind, if you are living in Queensland, if you do see and hear of any bomb warnings with regards to thunderstorms over the next couple of days, please take heed of them. There will be some very strong thunderstorms around and they will be probably getting quite close to some very populated areas. Up here in the northeast Arnhem district, we've seen a gulf, uh, a gulf line here really pushing westwards. This big line of thunderstorms and showers, uh, very intense line pushing to the west here. Now, the Bureau of Meteorology in the Northern Territory has upgraded the cyclone outlook to a low potential because we are expecting to see a very weak low spinning up here in the southern Arafura Sea. And we talked about this a couple of days ago and mentioned the fact that we could see a spin up here. But obviously it goes without saying the area that we're all interested in is this area up here to the north of the Pilbara coastline. This is where a developing tropical low or a deepening tropical low is expected to become a tropical cyclone on its approach to the Pilbara coastline. Somewhere between Caratha and Port Hedland is the best guess estimate at the moment. You can already start to see when you look at the overlay here on the Oz Cyclone Chasers Weather Center for our subscribers, you can see the radar uh, showing us that there is a little bit of banding coming in here into this system, albeit it's not very strong banding at the moment, and that's to be expected considering it's still only a low, hasn't quite wrapped up into a cyclone yet. Elsewhere, we're seeing quite widespread showers and thunderstorms also in the inland parts of the Pilbara and Gascoigne. The latest Bureau of Meteorology cyclone map here shows us uh, the system may have just gone from being fun cyclone to something a little bit more serious, uh, with the possibility that it could intensify into a Category 2 on its approach to the Pilbara coast. And as I mentioned, the, the favoured location at the moment, somewhere between Caratha and Pardue, with the most likely scenario being between sort of Port Hedland and Wim Creek at the moment. You can see the error margin extends a fair way out here to the east, even east of, uh, just east of Pardue. Uh, we also have the warning zone all the way out here to Bidyadanga. That's only because we could see some fairly, more, uh, some fairly fresh to strong northwesterly winds on the northern side of this system as it, as it approaches the coast and as it hits the coast. There's going to be a large area of gales and there's already a large area of stronger winds here on the northeastern quadrant. And that's why this area is still under warning. It's not because we suddenly expect a shift to the east towards Broome or anything like that. Uh, it's just the, the way the actual cyclone is structured or the way the low is structured at the moment uh, is expected to, to mean that we'll see the strongest winds to the uh, northeast of the system and also the largest radius of those strong winds out here to the northeast of the system. Taking a closer look at the system here, we can see that there is some, uh, certainly some rotation there, but at this stage it still doesn't appear to be a very tightly circulating system, and until it becomes so, we, could, we won't see any rapid intensification. Looking at this type of imagery, what we're looking for here are the greens, and the greens show us areas of very heavy precipitation, and we can see some very heavy areas of precipitation here off the coast of the Pilbara to the south of the system centre. So when looking to see whether or not something can become a tropical cyclone, we've got to tick off a few checklists. The first checklist, sea surface temperatures. We can definitely tick that off. They're about 30 degrees. We need 26, so we need the green, and we've got this maroni reddy colour. That means we've got more than enough sea surface temperature, more than enough heat in the ocean to create a tropical cyclone. Next thing we look at is the precipitable water. If there's heaps of blue, it means there's not enough moisture in the atmosphere to allow a cyclone to develop and grow. Certainly not enough blue there to stop a cyclone. You can see a little bit of blue coming in from the western edge there, but still the cyclone is, or the, or the low pressure system, is attached to some really awesome moisture. Next thing we've got to look at is wind shear. Now, the system has undergone a fair amount of shear over the past 24 hours. And this is what's making it very difficult for it to get going. It's currently starting to get into an area that is much more favourable, much less wind shear. So at the moment, what's happening is that the system's trying to build its thunderstorms, and those thunderstorms are getting pushed away to the southwest because of east-northeast or northeasterly wind shear. 
The system's about to go into an area of much less vertical wind shear because it's tracking in this southerly direction. So we're going to see wind shear drop to around about 10 to 15 knots on its approach to the coast. And therefore, it's getting into an area that's much more favourable now for development in terms of shear. Not only do cyclones need a low vertical wind shear, they need an exhaust system. Just like a performance vehicle needs a good exhaust in order to perform, so does a tropical cyclone. If it doesn't have a good exhaust system, the cyclone chokes on itself and dies. In this, in this situation, the system is located in an area of upper level divergence, and that upper level divergence is being enhanced. It's quite vigorous. Uh, it's creating a massive outflow channel here to the south, and the system should be able to strengthen all the way to the coast, given the fact that it's got such a nice exhaust system. And that exhaust system will actually probably even get better over the next 24 hours. Alrighty, let's start taking a look at computer models. Okay, computer models are pretty adamant in this Karatha to, or just east of Karatha to Pardu area. Uh, they're very adamant that the system will cross the coast somewhere in that area. They're also pretty adamant on the time frame. So, you know, there's very little doubt here, but, you know, the little subtleties, the little subtle changes of direction in the system's track can make quite a difference in the overall effect on a particular populated area such as Karatha. You know, like if it moves, say, Port Hedland eastwards, Karatha's going to see nothing out of it, uh, you know, very little out of it anyway. Uh, whereas if it moves, say, around Wim Creek, Karatha and Port Hedland will both be affected quite dramatically from it but without either of those centres experiencing the core. Whereas if, say, it moves right over the top of Port Hedland, then obviously Port Hedland will uh, receive that core and receive the strongest of the weather, both wind and rainfall. So, so far we've got pretty good agreement on the GFS modelling. The Canadian CMC model is a little less accurate and therefore is showing us a few different outlying scenarios here out all the way out towards Bedidanga and also out uh, just past Karatha. So we're seeing a few different scenarios here on the CMC. The UKMET model also uh, starting to look very, uh, very positive for this Karatha all the way through to Pardu, albeit it has a slight more westerly shift here in the system. We're expecting to see a more south southwest to south motion throughout its forecast track. Uh, also, the UK met just holding back a landfall to around about lunchtime on Saturday in a lot of its model members. So at this stage, we're looking at landfall sometime between Saturday morning to mid-afternoon, dependent, of course, on what computer model you're looking at. Intensity modelling is always very difficult with these systems before they start to uh, become fully developed cyclones, but at this stage the intensity modelling varying from around about 985 hectopascals all the way out to about 1000 hectopascals. Look, it is very likely that this will now become a cyclone. It's just a matter of how strong it'll be. Will it, will it be a Category 1? Will it be a Category 2? Will it maybe be a high-end Category 2 if it can get itself together quicker than expected? So tomorrow we're going to start to see some moderate to heavy falls developing along the Pilbara coastline as that system begins to approach. Now as we go into Saturday that system makes landfall and so you can see here 50 to 100 millimetres likely in large parts of the Pilbara coastline extending also to the northern Gascoigne and eastern Gascoigne regions as well as there's a trough system in operation too which the cyclone will be feeding in a lot of moist tropical air into. On a Sunday, that system will then move away to the southeast. The trough system will also move away to the east, and we'll see those moderate falls of rain moving further southeast with it. Up north, uh, and we're going to zoom out now and have a look at the Australian region, the monsoon trough reorganises up here in the Timor Sea. So just backtracking for the rest of the nation on Friday, we can see scattered to isolated showers and thunderstorms right across the eastern half of Queensland also across the northern half of the NT. Now, as we go to Saturday, we can see this area here in the Arafura Sea starting to look at some fairly strong rainfall potential there. This is where the Bureau of Meteorology has issued that uh, slight upgrade to the cyclone potential uh, in this region. Uh, also across eastern Queensland, we've still got that trough system creating scattered showers and thunderstorms, severe cells embedded in all that, and extending further to the northwest and Gulf Country as well as extending westwards through to the central 
and northern parts of the NT. But as we mentioned, this is the area that we focus on. Sunday, as I said, that low pushes inland. The monsoon trough, you can see it here, associated with all this rain associated with it, uh, is now starting to reorganise itself up here and nudging the top end of Australia. So it, the monsoon won't get pulled down here and become part of the Australian mainland. It'll actually start to reorganise itself just off the north coast here. Uh, and that's the expectation anyway. The monsoon trough has a mind of its own sometimes, but at this point in time, that is the expectation. Once again on Sunday, scattered showers to widespread showers and thunderstorms across the southeast parts of Queensland, extending further to the northwest. But as I mentioned, uh, that Herbert Lower Burdekin coastline might be missing out there on Sunday. On Monday, we have uh, isolated to scattered showers and thunderstorms again across Queensland. You can see the monsoon trough really starting to organise now up here in the far northern extremities of the continent. There's also a monsoon break here across the Coral Sea, and the monsoon trough then reorganises out here towards the Solomons. So you can see over the next week, we're looking at a fair amount of rain across the northern half of Australia, particularly uh, most of it, unfortunately, being just offshore as this monsoon trough reorganises just to the north of Australia. But have no fear, I do anticipate that a lot of this rainfall will eventually make its way southwards towards the far northern parts of Australia. Now, how far south? Not sure yet, but... February certainly does promise to be a much more active weather month than January was. Thanks for watching this update, folks. Just a reminder, if you'd like to be a subscriber, gain access to our weather centre and gain access to us live while we're on the chase, head over to ozcyclonechases.com.au and click on subscribe. We'll have another public update for you tomorrow night. We will have a subscriber update in the morning for our subscribers. And also for our subscribers, we've updated the Queensland state update and we'll be updating the Northern Territory state update overnight tonight. Enjoy your Friday.